need for you, right? Now, what if your liver says, uh, you know what, I'm checking out because uh, I don't need to be a part of this body. What happens? You die. Done. You gotta. You better. You better watch out because that little organ is really important. And you know what happens, right? If the heart says, "You know what? I'm not gonna work. I'm not gonna do my part anymore." You guys can keep on going. What happens? Done. Will the body continue to live? No. <laughs> or even <clears throat> again, I, I've given this illustration before. Is when you're working in your garden and you're working with roses and trimming the roses, what usually happens? You get pricked, right? Mm -hmm. And just a little thorn prick, now that one finger, just that finger hurts, right? No. Your whole body is like, ow! That's painful. And in the same way, every single part of the body, whether it's uh, uh, something that we can see, which most of our body we can't see, right? Mm -hmm. And all the integral parts of the body, each part of the body, God made for a reason. And the same way the body of Christ, each person has something that God has blessed them with, with a certain gift, to exercise it, to bless each other so that the, the body of Christ can function. In Ephesians 5, it talks about, uh, and I practically have this passage memorized because when I was in Hawaii, I used to do a lot of weddings. In fact, I think I've probably done over 900 weddings in my lifetime because I was uh, the pastor that they would call at different, I, I was connected with uh, Aloha Wedding Planners and uh, Waimea Falls Park, and so people, a lot of people dream of going to Hawaii to get married. I even remember this one time where this, uh, I had to go to a beach and, and this couple, um, she was wearing a bikini and uh, uh, high heels in sand. <laughs> and, and you know, people have weird ideas, but the thing is I would, I would remember that scripture passage about Ephesians, the fifth chapter, where it talks about the relationship within the husband and the wife. And a lot of times when I do counseling, people say, well, I'll leave that part out at verse 21, <laughs> right? Leave 22 out. And a lot of times men will want to start with chapter 22 when they're talking about what women are supposed to do. But remember, verse 21 says, submit to one another why? Uh, why? What's the reason? For the reverence of Christ, to honor Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your hus your own husbands as how? As you submit to Christ. That's kind of hard to do. I mean, it's easy to submit to somebody, but if you don't do it as Christ submits, right? And I'm not just talking about your spouse, if you have one. But are you submitting to the body of Christ as you submit to Christ? Wow, that, that's kind of big, right? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we don't realize that we're not doing that. For the husband is head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so wives ought to be their, their own husbands as in everything, excuse me. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleanse her by the washing with water through the word. Now, if you talk about relationships between husbands and wives, how many times have you heard a husband demean her wife in public? Calling her like, she doesn't do this and she doesn't do that, and complains. What does the 
the people that are hearing that think about your love for your wife? <laughs> Not much, right? And in the same way, when we complain about each other in the body of Christ and have all this friction going on, people are not going to want to be a part of that. He says, and to present her to himself as a radiant church. What is radiant? What do you think of that word? Radiant. Glowing. Glowing. Something that's Amen. shiny, bright. Mm -hmm. Without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. I think that's really hard when the community looks at the church today to find a church that is holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves himself, loves, uh, he, he who loves himself, excuse me, <laughs> he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated, hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, shall cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a profound mystery. Now get this part right here. Because he said, this is a mystery. But I'm talking about Christ and the church. So you thought that he was talking about marriage, right? But no, he's trying to bring this illustration and analogy of the husband and wife relationship and says, no, I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself. How do you love each other as you love yourself? Wow, that's a hard one, right? I mean, mm -hmm. are you really doing that? Jesus himself says, love your neighbor as yourself. And then you know the story, who is my neighbor? Not just the body of Christ, but everyone is your neighbor. How you doing? The wife must respect her husband. I want to close with this scripture verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, The new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. We have the responsibility to, to keep relationships together. And when there's a broken relationships, Help nurture that relationship to keep it together. One thing I do when I do marriages is I'd like to not only have the vows between the husband and the wife or the bride and the groom, but I want to include everybody, the guests, and say, do you promise or want to commit to helping this couple grow in their relationship? And when they're having hard times, encourage them to stick it out. Instead, what happens today is a lot of times if there's something that's going on, maybe the wife is unfaithful and says, you know what, that guy's a jerk. Leave him. Instead of trying to encourage him, let's work it out. Let's forgive each other. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to become sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's a big responsibility for us to have. That we become the righteousness of God. 
it's so important that we get out of ourselves and our own ego humble ourselves and allow the Holy Spirit to live within us so that we might be shining bright this little light of mine I'm going to let it shine to our community